Hello, my name is Mike Haugley and I get to serve as the athletic director here at Great Plains Lutheran. This video is designed for freshmen and parents of freshmen. And this is the orientation video where we're going to talk about some of the general things about Panther activities. Um, if you are looking for a specific video in regards to the new COVID policies, that's on a different video that I will make as well. When we talk about activities at GPL, one of the sayings that we have around here is the Panther way. And the Panther way is somewhat of a motto, but it's even more than that um, because uh, it talks about how we treat each other. Um, it's, it's really how we, we function and how we talk about this. So you'll oftentimes hear coaches and directors talking to the students about doing things the Panther way. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's really our essence of what we are and what we get to do here. And it really boils down to reflecting the love of Christ um, in our actions, in our actions and how we interact with each other, how we interact with uh, directors and leaders, even how we interact with opponents and officials and everything like that. Um, so your student will become familiar with that saying of the Panther way, and it applies to many, many different aspects of life here at GPL. Um, that expectation is not just something that we put on the student athletes. It also, it also something that I hold our coaches accountable to. I hold myself accountable to it. And I also ask you as parents to try to emulate that and reinforce that concept with your student athletes throughout the school year. And if we all do that, I think we'll be off to a great start. The role of sports at GPL, uh, at, on the next slide I will put um, a listing of many of the activities, not all of them, but many of the different activities that we have here at GPL. Um, and sports is a wonderful opportunity for students to use the talents that God's given them uh, to the best of their abilities. It might even allow them to discover talents that they didn't really know they had. Um, students, when it comes to thinking about different activities, um, my encouragement for you would be to not only do the ones that you really have a strong passion for, but if time allows, Think about maybe joining up with other um, activities as well. Um, sometimes you can find that there's something that you've never done before that can be a lot of fun. So here's the list of those activities. and They're broken up by season, as you can see. And this is not a com comprehensive list. There are also some fine arts activities that I was not able to put on here. Um, but you'll also see some all-year items at the bottom like Honor Choir, Honor Society, Student Council, and various different academic competitions as well. When it gets close to graduation time, I pull the seniors aside and ask them what advice would they give to the 14-year-old version of themselves that is just starting high school. And There are some varying responses, but the overwhelming majority of the responses is get involved. Do that thing that you're not sure if you should do. Find a way to be involved in something. Now students, as student athletes, your number one job is the classroom. To keep your studies up, make sure that you are eligible and doing well in the classroom. But then after that, perhaps some of these things on this list are something you want to get involved in. Um, many of these activities in the fall have already started, but others are not. Uh, started yet or uh, some of the ones that have started would welcome more people. So if you're on the fence about doing some of these things, I would encourage you to either talk to a teacher or maybe talk to a student that you know is, is involved in those things and learn more about them. Because um, one of the great um, things about our school size is that we're small enough that students can be involved in so many things as long as obviously time management allows them to keep up with their studies as I mentioned before. Parents, there's a couple of things I would like to draw your attention to as to how you can stay on top of all the different schedules for all these different activities. Typically, if we were meeting in person, we would be handing out posters and wallet handouts that um, would have the printed schedules on them. And we still have those available and you can receive those at school here. Um, the downside to all the printed schedules is that once they're printed, you can't make any changes to them. And uh, in a year that we have here, I am very certain that there will be changes that need to be made. Um, but at least you could have something printed and put it in a place where you can reference it, which could be useful. 
When it comes to the printed calendars, I just want to point out as well that if we are playing a road competition, um, we sometimes need to indicate which town the games are in because uh, many of our opponents are co-ops. So they have two or maybe even three schools in different towns, and obviously the competition is only going to be in one of those places. So if there is a, a co-op school as our opponent and we're playing away, we always underline the city in which the game is happening because we don't want someone who thinks the game is in Henry to show up and realize that the game was in Florence 20 miles away. Um, so please be cognizant of that. If you would rather not worry about something that's printed and potentially could be outdated, I would strongly encourage you to regularly check our GPL Google Calendar. On the Google Calendar, we'd have all of our events and activities and um, we can edit it when we need to make the changes. And so that is the most up-to-date calendar that we have, and we make sure that all of those necessary changes are um, shown on our school Google Calendar. You can access that calendar through our school website, gplhs.org. One other way that you can stay up-to-date on the different activities is through our weekly update. Every Thursday or Friday, the weekly update gets sent out for the next week. Um, and in that weekly update is something that I make, which is called the two-week view, where you get a snapshot of the different things that are going to be happening in the next two weeks, which would include all activities and um, where they're at and would give you the most up-to-date information as well. So a couple of different ways that you can try to stay up-to-date with um, our, our calendar and potentially any changes that need to be done there. I'd also mention that if you follow our school on Facebook, on, the, on our school's Facebook page, we do put updates of all schedule changes there as well. So that might be another way to try to stay up to date on those. If using your phone is really up your alley and you prefer an app, there is an app that we use for scheduling as well. It's called Our School Today. And again, if we were in person, there would be an actual piece of paper that we would hand out with instructions on how to download and access the GPL calendars. For right now, I'd say if you want to use this app, contact the school office or contact me, and I can get you those instructions myself. Um, the, the perk of this app is, again, it's a digital thing. You can see if there are changes. But you can also, in the settings, give you um, alerts. So if a if a scheduling change or a cancellation or something happens, um, you can decide how you want to receive those alerts via either email or text message or what have you. And you can choose which activities you want to be alerted to. So if you want to just pick the activities your child is, is in, you can do that. Or you could select all of them. It, it's all up to you. So there is some flexibility with the Our School Today app. And so, again, if you have... Uh, more questions about it or if you'd like information regarding that, uh, please contact the school office or myself and we can get you that information. Students, um, hopefully you're aware that on the first day of school we are doing regular school pictures in the morning, um, but we'll also be using that day in the afternoon to take care of fall sports pictures. Um, so students, make sure that you uh, fill out an order form if your parents want you to get uh, the photo buttons or um, a picture package. The order form should have gone out to you in the in the uh, July um, packet of information that was sent out. We also have more order forms in the school office if that's needed, um, but we do take those pictures on the very first day of school, so be on the ball with that. And if you are involved in either cross country, volleyball, or football, your coaches should be talking to you about um, making sure you have your uniforms and communicating the steps and the process in that um, picture day as well. A few things that I would like to highlight from the athletic handbook. Again, that should have been sent out with the packet of information this summer. Um, but when it comes to eligibility, the state rules are that um, an athlete must maintain a 2.0 GPA. That's a C average. And they must be passing all of their classes, and they must be complete. UI stands for unjustified incomplete, and that would be um, given to someone who perhaps has just been lazy and hasn't gotten work in or something of that nature. So student-athletes, do your best to maintain your GPA well over 2.0, 
and be passing your classes and current in your classes and eligibility shouldn't be a problem. We check uh, grades on a, about a monthly basis, roughly maybe four to five weeks and um, academic eligibility is determined off of that. Um, in the athletic handbook, there's a section about playing time and just a couple notes from me in regards to that. Obviously, playing time can be a, a touchy subject. Uh, people have very passionate opinions on that. Um, if there needs to be communication uh, from your family in regards to playing time, I really, really strongly encourage you to follow um, the guidance that we have from Jesus in Scripture, from Matthew chapter 18. And if it's involving the student and their playing time, my number one encouragement would be that the student athlete talks to the coach themselves, and that be something that they take the responsibility to do. Um, sometimes that's not an easy conversation to have, but it's, I think it's a big part of the growing up process that we encourage um, students to do that. I, I think the default sometimes is to uh, have the parents try to fight this battle for their kids, um, and I would encourage you to resist that urge initially and let the student athlete have that initial conversation. Um, sometimes just that first conversation can go a long way to getting answers. And parents, you don't have to just sit on the sidelines. If you feel like um, a second conversation needs to be had, um, certainly you can facilitate and uh, work on getting that meeting with the coach as well. But please let the student athletes start it. Um, when it comes to this situation as the athletic director, my job is not to pick a side, but to make sure that there's clear communication. Um, and so I would do. A, I would be involved in making sure that that process happens. And then finally, when it comes to playing time, I would just encourage everyone involved to remember that there's a, a, a correct way to have this conversation. Um, high emotions right after a contest can lead to saying things either the wrong way or um, maybe not having a, the correct filter or whatever, however you want to say it. So please understand that um, while I highly encourage coaches to have open communication with all of our parents, um, there's an appropriate time and place and tone for all conversations. A good night's sleep does everybody a world of good. Um, I've instructed my, my, my coaches to always reply to emails within 24 hours, but also keep in mind that all of our coaches are extremely busy with a full teaching load and planning for practice and all the different things that go along with being a called worker. So if they don't immediately get back to you, um, they might be collecting their thoughts or they just simply might be busy. So please have a little bit of grace and understanding in that. And um, hopefully uh, that will be sufficient enough for our proper communication lines. A couple other items I want to draw your attention to. Um, our school gives out a 20 punch pass to each family at the beginning of the year to be used for home games. Um, and so please enjoy that and take advantage of that. Hopefully our um, contest will continue to allow for as many spectators as would like. Uh, and so we pray that that's the situation. GPL offers transportation for all student athletes to and from every event. However, there might be times when it might be more prudent for a student athlete to return home um, with their parents. If that is the case, uh, the bus driver will have a binder with transportation release forms, which just simply says, as parents, you're taking on the responsibility of getting them home and releasing the school from that. But please make sure that that's um, signed so that we have a paper trail uh, as to who that, who, who's expected to be on the bus and who is not. There have been a couple of times when we are one person short and we're looking for that person and then we find out that they're halfway home already because they went home with their parents, but failed to sign a, a sheet. So please, um, parents, look for the bus driver and get those signed for us. As always, we will be live streaming all of our home events, both in the gym and on the football field. Um, but perhaps even more so this year, uh, this service might be even more valuable. Um, hopefully we don't need to restrict and limit the number of people who can attend our activities, but time will tell. And so that's um, that service on our YouTube channel. If you just go to YouTube and search Great Plains Lutheran, um, you will be directed to our school's page. And um, if there's a live event happening, that should be the very first thing that pops up. 
Otherwise, our activities are archived and you can watch them at a later date as your schedule allows. When it comes to home activities, um, one of the other things that we encourage parents to consider is finding time to help in the concession stand. This is not as much of a need during the four football games uh, as the same crew usually does all of them. But when it comes to volleyball and then in the winter basketball games, um, help is needed. So if you could look at your schedule and see if there are dates that you could perhaps spend some time working the concession stand, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, like many things, there are some extra guidelines with the COVID policies in regards to how our concession stand is going to work and function, but it's something that anyone could do. Um, so please take a look at that. If you would like to um, work in the concession stand, Mrs. Miller in the office has set up a sign up genius where we can track who we can be expecting so that we know that we have all the events covered. So please just take a look at that and see if there are opportunities for you and your family to spend some time helping us out in that situation and your, your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Um, as athletic director, I work with our students, especially when it comes to injuries, um, but I'm going to talk more about the concussion protocol as we go on to further slides. So I'm gonna skip that part right here. Uh, because the rest of my presentation really is uh, um, designed by our athletic trainers, and I'm going to go through their presentation next. I'm going to slide myself if I can get my technology to work. Get out of the way a little bit here. Very good. Perfect. All right. Uh, Great Plains Lutheran and Big Stone Therapies in town here have had a relationship going back now to 13 years where um, we've had trainer services in some capacity from them. And this year we're gonna be working primarily with two different ladies, um, Mackenzie Hardy, who started working with us last year as our primary trainer, and then Trisha Riefenberger, who is a co-owner of Big Stone Therapies and has been around and serving GPL for many, many years before uh, Mackenzie did. Um, Mackenzie's expecting their first child here this fall and so while she's not able to be here, Trish will be here. So if your student is injured, um, they'll probably be seeing one of these two ladies uh, as they go on the path to recovery. So I just wanted to get you familiar with their faces because it's not someone that is uh, very, very public. You might see one of them wandering the football sidelines and, and tending to injuries and such, but um, that's about the mo most exposure that they get. So. When a student says that they went and saw Mackenzie or Trish, I wanted you to at least have a face that you can put with that name here. So when it comes to um, Big Stone Therapy services here, uh, in the fall they come twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays after school, to see injured students and to give them um, stretches and movements in the realm of physical therapy to do so that they can return to activity as soon as possible. It's our goal that students only see them once or twice and that um, by doing the instructed um, recovery movements, they will get back to activity. Now, there could be injuries that require more, um, more training, more, more physical therapy than just once or twice, and we'll deal with that as it goes along. I'm not going to read every word from their PowerPoint here, but... Um, I do want you to be able to have access to some of this information. So if there is a more chronic injury or a nagging injury that does not go away quickly, um, it's very common that um, it's, it, it, they recommend that an actual uh, appointment is made at their clinic where they have access to a whole lot more um, machinery and hopefully the uh, road to recovery can be much quicker. Um, but just be aware of that, parents, that if things just aren't getting better, um, they might go at, down the road to their clinic and actually schedule an appointment. Um, and it would be the, the practice that the, the, the office would contact you. They wouldn't be just scheduling these um, appointments without your knowledge or consent. But just so you're understanding what the general MO is, after a few visits, if things aren't getting better, they may recommend an actual in-clinic um, appointment. When it comes to Big Stone Therapy, perhaps the greatest tool that they have for us is um, in the realm of concussions. And we'll get more into that in uh, just a moment, but 
you'll see uh, our trainers in person, like I mentioned, on the sidelines for football games. And we also are lined up for all four of our road games this year that either Big Stone Therapies or someone very similarly trained will be available for all injuries for football this year. So I'm very excited about us having proper uh, personnel lined up for those games. When it comes to concussions and when it comes to other injuries, um, our conservative motto as a school, and you can see it there above the picture, is when in doubt, pull them out, or when in doubt, sit them out. Uh, just because, um, you know, sideline screenings shortly after a, a acute injury can give us some information, but perhaps we're just not certain whether it's safe for a student to get back into, you know, football is probably the most obvious example of a, a rough sport that could re-injure a potential injury. And so we value our students so much that sometimes we need to prevent them from, protect them from even themselves. And um, if we're not certain that they're fit to get back into the activity, we're going to take the side of caution for their safety. All right, when it comes to concussions, through Big Stone Therapy, we use a computer program called Impact. And I am the primary contact when it comes to this um, technology. But it basically is a cognitive test which, function, which evaluates the way that a normal brain functions. So all of our students will be taking this um, impact test at the beginning of the school year. And then if an injury happens where we suspect that there could be a concussion, uh, they will go through a similar process and trained doctors will be able to see whether the brain is functioning properly or whether there are um, concussion-like symptoms that would cause the brain to function differently. And obviously we can't see our brains like we can see a sprained wrist or a rolled ankle that gets puffy. Uh, and so this technology allows us to see if a brain injury has occurred. It's a very powerful tool that we've used for many, many years uh, with great success. If there are concussion symptoms that a doctor diagnoses a student with concussion, um, there are some things that go into a pr uh, protocol, things that go into effect right away. Um, this depends on each individual case, so we can't just have a blanket every single time type policy, but here are some things that we typically do for students with concussions. The first might be that we restrict all activity and might even limit the amount of school activity that they can do if it's a more severe um, symptomatic concussion. Um, basically trying to give the brain a break and, and allow the brain to rest and recuperate. So again, I would say in general, with all of these that we're going to go through, this is kind of the general guidelines. However, with each specific um, concussion, the policy will be tweaked to the needs of each individual student. So, we will restrict all physical activity and all contact. The last thing we want to have for a concussed student is to have a second impact, uh, which has been known to cause permanent brain damage. And obviously that's the ultimate goal is that we re prevent any of that situation. As a student slowly starts to make the, the steps of recovery, um, they will be advised to begin to do light activity, perhaps stretching, perhaps some light aerobic work um, and to see if any symptoms um, continue through that process. And so all of our head coaches for all of our activities are aware of our policies here and procedures. And the timeline for these return to play activities um, can be varying from a week to several weeks, depending upon how each individual student progresses through our policies. But what we're looking to have is we're looking to start low activity without a flare-up of, of symptoms. We're looking to get the student back to regular school workload if we had made reductions initially. Um, and we're trying to get things a little bit more back to normal, if you will. As a student continues to increase their, um, their, their how they're feeling, their progression, we're going to slowly ramp up the work to a little bit more vigorous activity, maybe some jogging, maybe some plyometrics, or maybe even some weight training, depending upon, again, how they're feeling. And 
all of this assuming that no symptoms um, increase or flare up. After that, we're going to hopefully see the, the symptoms continue to go down. I should have mentioned earlier, when a student is concussed, when they're diagnosed with a concussion, every single day they come to school, we're going to ask them to come to the office to do a daily symptom rating. So we can see, hopefully, um, progress on a daily basis. Um, and so that's going to be something that we'll instruct the students to do as they go through this process. And hopefully as they continue to see less and less symptoms, we'll get to this point here where they're able to get back involved with their activities. We will retest um, with the impact testing where hopefully the doctor will see that the cognitive functioning of the brain is back to its normal um, functions. And that is uh, how we get a student out of our concussion protocol and back into actual gameplay. As I tell all the students, uh, when we take the tests, um, they get one brain, right? God's given us the body to take care of, and in, in that body, a very important part of it is our brains. And so we want to make sure that we are keeping that thing safe. And that's really the whole point of this whole protocol that I'm highlighting here, is to keep them safe so that uh, they can get back to their activities, but in a time and fashion that allows them to do it safely. So if you have questions specifically about that, you may ask myself. And here's also the contact information for our two ladies that I mentioned earlier, for Tricia and Mackenzie. So hopefully that overview was useful. Um, very, very thankful for the services that Big Stone Therapy is able to provide our student athletes. Finally, uh, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for uh, embarking on this endeavor. Uh, it's great that we're going to be back in person. It's been about six months since we've had kids on campus. Um, what GPL is able to offer students as they go through a very important part of their developmental years uh, in the high school years is just astounding. And so I very much thank you for valuing what we're able to offer here at Great Plains Lutheran. Whether this is your first child or whether this is your baby coming through or whatever number you're on, um, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to work with you, whether you're local or whether you're a distance parent. So thank you for entrusting your child or your children to our care. Um, I want to thank you in advance for um, supporting all of our athletes that are going to be involved with our activities this year. Lord willing, we'll be able to have all three seasons in person, and we won't have cancellations like we had last year. Um, whether it's your student or whether it's their teammates, please encourage them and support them uh, as they do their best in our different activities. So God's blessings to you, God's blessings to our students, and God's blessings to our school as we endeavor upon the 25th school year at GPL. I would invite you to shoot any other questions that you have my way. I'm always willing and able to answer those questions for you. And I hope that this was an informative uh, video which highlighted some of the uh, things with our activities and athletics. God's blessings to you, and I look forward to seeing you at the next game.